Uh, in this problem, we are discussing one of the most beautiful theorem on the convergence of uh, monotone uh, sequence of functions, and uh, it's very powerful. It has many, many applications uh, in uh, real analysis and the study of continuous functions and functions in general. So this is known as the uh, theorem of Dini or Dini's theorem. Okay, one may may want to look at, for example, the story, the history of Dini or Udis Dini. Uh, in any case, so what do we have? We have a sequence of functions f n defined on a subset A, and we assume two things that uh, f n's are all continuous. We assume that the fn converge pointwise to f, which is also continuous as n goes to infinity. So this is pointwise. Huh? The limit is pointwise, means for every x in A, okay, fn of x goes to f of x as n goes to infinity. Okay? And uh, the most important property as well is to assume that that the fn's are uh, decreasing or increasing, it doesn't matter. But for our problem here, we're assuming that they are what? Decreasing. Okay? For any x in A. So, uh, of course, this theorem is false if A is not uh, what we call compact or close and bounded. So here, the assumption, the crucial assumption that A is closed and okay uh, bounded is crucial which implies that A is compact yeah, for this theorem for the validity of this theorem okay great so let's bring everything to zero because F is continuous the limit is also important to assume that F is continuous so let us do uh, in our case because it's decreasing so we know that f of x would be smaller than the fn of x for every x and every n. Okay, so let us introduce the functions gn to be uh, fn of x minus f of x. So in this case we know that they will be all positive and continuous. So GNs are continuous and positive, and that GN plus 1 is less than GN. And of course, that GN, they converge to 0 pointwise. Okay? So the term of Dini tells us that, in fact, GN okay, will converge uniformly, converges uniformly to 0 on A. So this is what we want to prove. Huh? Claim okay, that the GNs converges uniformly to 0 on N. Okay, for that, let us consider the set uh, for every N. Fix N in N and Epsilon positive and consider the set AN, which is the set of x in A, such that gn of x is less than epsilon. So remember the gn's are positive. So the, since gn's are all continuous, this set AN is open. Subset of A. Next, note that AN plus 1 is bigger. And the reason is because the GNs are decreasing, okay? Since the GNs are decreasing, so these sets are getting bigger and bigger, okay? So, for any X in A, we know that GN of X goes to 0 pointwise, yeah? I mean, sorry, the GN goes to 0 pointwise, therefore GN of X goes to 0. For that, there exists N, 0, such that gn of 
x will be less than epsilon which tells me that x belongs to a and 0 in other words that a is in the union of all the a n's okay so remember you have now a countable uh, or at least a family of open sets which covers A, A being compact, okay, so A being compact, since A is compact, there exists N1 less than, I'm sorry, N1, N2, NP, such that A is in a and one union A and P and because they are getting bigger and bigger this is included in A of the max of the NI's okay what does that mean it means there exists an N zero okay sorry there exists N such that A is subset of a sub n, which means that for every x in a, we have g n of x less than epsilon. Okay, so what did we prove? We proved that for every epsilon, there exists an n such that the soup of g n of x is less or equal than epsilon. Keep in mind that the GNs are decreasing, so for any n greater than capital N, we know that the soup of GN of x, of course I'm putting the absolute value, but here since everything is positive, then we don't need the absolute value. It's less or equal than the soup of G of capital N of x, less or equal than epsilon. This tells me that the GN converges uniformly to zero as claimed.